Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us here on Nonprofits Mean Business 2 on Think Tech Hawaii. I have uh, the privilege and the honor of interviewing Puni Jackson, the director of Kakua, uh, Kakua Kalihi Valley, KKB. And um, she's going to talk a little bit about her her mission statement. Now, before we get to that, I just want to say that the, the, the nature of the show essentially is to help the greater community understand the what's going on in the community as far as the nonprofits, how they serve the community as the gap between government and private entity. So uh, with that having been said, I'd like to introduce Puni Jackson. Aloha. Um, thank you so much for welcoming me. And I, I wanna make just a tiny correction that I'm not the director of Kokua Kalihi Valley. I'm the director of Ho'olu Aina, which is a project and program of Kokua Kalihi Valley. Thank you for making that clarification. Sure. We have the most amazing executive director, and his name is David Durop. Wouldn't I could have never um, take his place. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, um, Puni, thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, I want to uh, ask you a little bit about, we'll start out with the mission statement. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the mission that you guys are doing. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and read the mission statement because it's one of those ones that hit deep in your heart. But when you get to the end of the statement, you kind of have forgotten the beginning. It's really long. I'm going to read it out loud. Together, we work toward healing, reconciliation, and the alleviation of suffering in Kalihi Valley by serving communities, families, and individuals through strong relationships that honor culture and foster health and harmony. Um, that's a statement, a mission statement that we all hold very dear. It's something that's on all of our, I don't have my badge on me, but it's on our name badges. It's something that we use when we do any sort of organizational training that helps us to remember the why, like why we do what we do. It really touches back to those initial um, team members that sat around the table in 1972 um, and made the choice that this is what the community needed, a community health center, somebody who is going to be able to look out for the diverse needs of our community. And, and you do do that. You have a variety of services that you offer the community, if you'd like to tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. Um, well, let me start with the, our, a founding story that we always love to share. And so back... Um, when Kokua Kalihi Valley was founded, we had three super aunties, we call them, <laughs> uh, elder women in the community that went door to door. Well, now they're elders. At the time, I think they were quite young. <laughs> they went door to door in the community saying, how are you feeling? How are you? What is it that you need? And in many cases, overwhelmingly, the answer was health support. We need doctors. We need dentists. And so our work started with um, a, just a donated trailer in the parking lot of a church. And the executive director at that time, his name is Jory Watlin. He's still a community member here in Kalihi in the back. And um, he just got don't, uh, doctors and dentists and slow by slow in the 70s, just responding to what was needed. And in every wave of shifting that Kalihi Valley went through from that time forward, um, Kokua Kalihi Valley was listening and responding. So we didn't ever move away from that sort of listening door to door. A lot of times nowadays in, um, you know, academics teaches you, you're going to do the evaluation and then you're going to implement. Well, we are formative from the beginning and all the way through till now. Um, in the 80s, we were the first ones to have a domestic violence shelter. I think somewhere in the late 80s, maybe early 90s, we even had a, a a credit union because we found that many of our community members were um, facing the inequity of not being able to establish um, healthy banking and economic systems. Um, but we've responded in every uh, new wave of uh, challenge that our community face. And um, in from dentists to doctors, I personally, I'm the director of a nature preserve. Uh, so in the back of Kalihi Valley is a 100 acre nature preserve called Ho'ulu Aina. And 
on that nature preserve, we do everything from native forestry, um, community food production, um, la um, native medicines. Uh, we do everything that we can with community engagement. So hoa aina, this idea of sharing the land and friendship, and um, whether we're painting a structure or planting a row of olena, we want uh, the community engaged. And then we uh, we also do a lot around culture and listening, evaluation, making sure that the ways that um, our community and the systems beyond this community are responding to needs has to do with the indigenous values of this place. And so that's part of what Holu Aina is all about. That's my kind of pre-pandemic um, <laughs> ongoing job. And since the beginning of the COVID um, pandemic here in Kalihi Valley, I've also taken on the responsibility um, as director of Hui Hoaka, which is our response to the pandemic needs. And so um, in February and March, that included um, outreach calls and in-home deliveries, food support, cleaning supplies, public health education, all different kinds of things. And as of late, as many of us know, Kalihi has um, one of the highest uh, or the highest uh, rate of COVID in the state currently. And so um, Hui Hoaka is uh, deep in the trenches of working with systems and developing systems and implement, implementing the systems to make sure that people are safe. Um, a lot of it has to do with economics and um, and so sometimes you don't necessarily think of a health center as responding to economic needs, um, but we, we do all of the different facets and we always have. And so Brandon, I'm really uh, grateful that you wanted to start with our mission because never have we gone deeper into our mission since the COVID crisis. Yeah, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about that. That was part of the agenda was that we would get an opportunity to find out how COVID has affected how you, uh, your operations, of course, and uh, some of those challenges and, and what you've done to overcome those. And then, uh, but you continue to serve the community nonetheless. That's right. That's right. Um, if, uh, if anything, it's taken us back to our roots. Um, you know, over time, we started as a small nonprofit, a small little health center in a trailer. And now we're the largest employer in our community, the largest employer in the Valley. And so we have um, just like 220 maybe um, staff members. Uh, but that's a, that's a big uh, employer for Kalihi Valley. Most of our uh, community's members kind of leave the Valley to, to support um, uh, other industries. You know, so really, hmm? Oh yeah, no, that's great. Um, that that you guys uh, still have you have the you have access to the resources. Uh, you continue to communicate and develop new resources, as well as uh, in finding ways to serve your community regardless of the challenge at hand. And so, uh, being in the situation that you are, there's obviously some challenges around COVID-19 within your own organization that you guys are no doubt addressing and that you're taking that information, the education out to the community. You want to talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure. Um, so in the very beginning, uh, we had many people were being shut down throughout the community and businesses and um, as we all remember, and some of our care um, services uh, were, were also not able to be performed, so, some, such as dental and Lomi Lomi, uh, that really intimate impact, we wanted to really um, protect against that, uh, uh, you know, the spread or any sort of contagion and so our dental um, department got redeployed and they became farmers and cooks and um, food hub operators and um, delivery team and all of our different departments, including dental, but far beyond too. We started to um, integrate and support each other. Um, you know, normally in a nonprofit, as you would know, granted that you have a grant, you have deliverables, you have the project, you have the program, and it's sort of siloed, siloed by funding, siloed by deliverables. And uh, our actual relationship 
with one another and with our community is much more integrated. And so as we redeploy, like responding to the challenge of employment or you know, shifting in employment within the organization, we actually found that the network of support became much stronger. People were connecting much deeper to their sort of why, you know, their, their motivation behind being part of Kokua Kalihi Valley and serving the community in the most urgent ways. And so, yes, we responded and we reached out to many um, funders and um, support agencies. And we had, um, you know, 48 years of relationship building. We had some really powerful cheerleaders on our side that stood up with resources and donations and volunteers and um, really making it happen. And I think our position as a FQHC also made it a lot easier for us to navigate with the Department of Health and be able to communicate like this is what we really need. This is what we're hearing and seeing on the ground. We recognize that government is not nearly ever as nimble as community organizations or grassroots networks. And so we were able to like pivot very quickly and then partner as the cup uh, capacity building on the government side became more ready. And we're so grateful for some of our relationship building and some of the really challenging um, uh, tasks that leadership within both the city and the state took on. Um, the media was really rough on our community. The media was rough on the state. The media has been rough on the city. And so it's been really hard to be able to say like, look, what we really want to do is tell a story of love and connection and collaboration. And everybody has the long-term outcome of equity and care and health for our community. And I, I feel good about um, the kinds of partnerships that we're seeing uh, rise up and unfold. Did, would you uh, like to care, or care to elaborate on any of those partnerships or uh, how they came to be and what they're doing and how, you know, how they're supporting you? Um, sh well, we have, uh, I, Oh, where do I even start? So the Hawaii Community Foundation is, I would, I would like to say that they have been just amazing, really, really supporting and like getting in those parts of support where it's hard um, for, uh, you know, like, for example, the CARES Act money or HRSA funding, it's harder to, to get into those little details, you know, like actually our community needs rice and Simon and can, canned fish and her some money wasn't going to cover that. So HCF really stood up for that and our elders who were sheltering at home and having much, a lot of uh, challenges, we were able to deliver not only the fresh organic produce from our food hub um, that actually scaled up to this week, I think we're over 7,000 pounds of fresh organic produce from uh, local farmers from this island. Um, so we're delivering fresh food, but we also need those sort of dry goods food for the elders and the kupuna and those who are in the COVID positive families who are in quarantine. Um, and uh, funders like HCF, Bank of Hawaii, um, the Consuelo Foundation, those are partners that really like stood up and say, we'll, we'll fund the gap. We'll, we'll put forward for, for those in-between spaces. Um, you know, Hawaii Dental Services was supportive. So we've, we've had some amazing, and you know, this long in nonprofit, you know, you have this relationship and the funder and the accountability and the deliverable and the evaluation and all of that. This was the first time that I felt like the return on investment got put on the side because they absolutely knew and trusted that Kokua Kalihi Valley knew what the community needed and was going to give everything we can to make sure it gets there. And I, I would love for that to be the flavor of foundations and funding and even government relationships between um, geos and NGOs moving forward, that when you know that on the on the ground, the grassroots guys, that, that you know that they know the community deeply, that every way that we can kind of get out of the way so that the resources flow in the right way, I think that is what is pono, that is aloha. And I felt that very strongly in the last six months from our partners. 
Wow, the Queen's that... Foundation also um, was very, I, I can't even, I'm a little bit embarrassed because I should have a, a thorough list where I can name. No, that's okay. That's all, there's always a challenge with that. And, you know, I would just say that, of course, it, look, you know, talking to you and uh, get, I get a feeling by talking to you about the passion that you have and that you're not just working there, you're living it. It's part of who you are. It, it's the very, not just a foundation of the organization, but it's, it's, you carry that with you everywhere you go. And so you do a very effective job of communicating that. And I'm sure that any of your partners, whoever they are, understands that. And uh, I just wanted to give you an opportunity uh, to do a shout out to some of those organizations that have, have been there for you. And the fact that you have these challenges of, you know, trying to, they've given you a square peg and they've actually put it into a round hole and you're like, well, it doesn't, oh, doesn't work that way. So you need to open up that conversation a little more and, and talk about how we can bridge those gaps for, for those various organizations. I think you guys are doing a great job. And I think, I think you articulated that very well. Um, Thank you. I am very passionate about the work and that's the truth for all of KKV. You know, our staff members, they live in this community. Their families are our patients, you know, so the, that interconnectedness, it makes you really clear that this is not just my job where I go and get a paycheck and wait for the clock to be done. Or, you know, this is not that kind of job. This is not even a job. This is my life, you know, that I'm able to live every day what I was taught to do and what I was taught to be. And I, I'm grateful also to be able to extend that to the staff members that I help, um, that all of our staff members can truly live their best gifts and apply them to the kuleana that we feel here in Hawaii. If there were uh, anything in specific, is it just, um, are you look, is it just financial uh, resources that you need or is what sort of things is it that, that you find uh, that you would need at this point in time or that you you're, you could use help with? Yeah, um, well, there's all kinds of ways that people can help. I think the first thing, and I, um, I've, been, I've been asked this a lot of questions, times and I, I'm a little, I'm, I'm hesitant to say, but I, I really truly believe this, that within your circle of influence to bring love, to be loving, to, be, to bring aloha with absolute courage to your circle of influence and to make that relationship building the model for every other relationship. I think that that is the best way that we can do um, like systemic change in our world. I feel like we enter into professional space and we forget the way that our grandparents taught us. You know, we enter into our business, our nonprofit space, and we become um, competitive or extractive the way that our educational systems have designed our minds to work. And nonprofit is that one place that Native peoples and people of color across the whole world and people who care about the earth and um, people who remember values, who care deeply about the values that they were raised with. Nonprofits is that really sharp tool where you can say, aloha matters, our values matter, my relationships matter, that I'm not gonna give up on something just because it's hard. You know, not nonprofits, the 501c3 is that sharp sword. And so what I would love, yes, we need canned fish. I need volunteers to pack rice in bags. I need some delivery staff. Um, I need somebody to help me with some of the data. Yes, I need all of that. But the first thing is to be courageous enough to make choices with aloha. And if you were raised that way, that you can be influencing that way, um, with people that look to you as a leader, because leaders are in this place, in this place of Hawaii, if we can make sure that our leaders are not looking at money before love and care and humanness and long-term survival of our water system and our land, it takes courage to make choices that come from aloha. It takes courage to live that way. And I, I, I think that that's the most important thing that we can do um you know i like i said we need stuff like a van to deliver the stuff and all of those things 
But um, overwhelmingly, I need people to go to bat for what is right. You know, that we faced a lot of things, a lot of stories in these last few months where people were blocked from getting really good care because of their ethnic background, because of their economic status, because of their inability to speak English maybe. And there's no reason why in every place that people who were raised with a certain value set of aloha, that every seat, every cubicle, every bus seat, that if you employ aloha and be courageous in that, that we will really make a difference. You know, um, I'm, I love your passion. I've, it's, uh, even though this is a video take, I, I feel like I'm sitting in the room with you. You know, uh, we got a question from a viewer and I'd like to address that. It's, and it says, how can individuals help KKB at this time, especially with the lockdown being extended? Um, with the lockdown, and especially if you have any needs for um, your own, you know, protection, we want to make sure to you stay stay at home. That's really helpful. It's heroic at this point to stay home. Um, you can donate online. Uh, Kokua Kalihi Valley has a COVID response. Um, you can definitely donate online. If you want to make it fun, you can go to Ho'ulu Aina's website and purchase objects. There are, you know, some, we didn't have, nobody has time for a GoFundMe, but you can buy stuff that we make and that's helpful so financially donations that's really good if you have um relationship with people who have resources so that could be ppe that could be dry goods that could be um cleaning supplies uh then you can re you can advocate for those resources to be uh shared with our delivery staff and with our bands here if you know some people who are really great um uh really great workers with good hearts and great work ethic and maybe have a good mind for public health and social determinants of health, have them apply online for um, employment. That we wanna, we, we think that the best way to help the economy is to employ people. And so we're gonna continue to fight for that to happen. You can go onto the KKV website and um, apply under uh, hui Hoaka advocate. And that's what I'm talking about as far as aloha. I'm in, employing that every person be an advocate. If you hear or see inequity in your community when it comes to resource or access, be an advocate. If you speak any other language than English, that's really helpful. We, our community speaks 27 different languages. Wow. <laughs> so we need translators often. Um, I don't know. I could go on and on, Brandon. <laughs> you know, that's the whole purpose. You know, uh, we, we want to know more about what you're doing, what your needs are to help continue to serve the community in the way that you do. One of the things that you mentioned early on that strikes a chord with me, of course, is values. Um, even though uh, one may come and uh, interface with your organization, either in the form of providing resources or coming to work or volunteer, the takeaway for them, as they'll come to find, is going to be several fold more than what it is that they actually give. Um, that's the thing that uh, we talk about in the organization I volunteer my time to, and, and you had indicated you are familiar with that organization, and that teaching the next generation. We're, we're teaching them the value system. We're teaching them what aloha is. We're, we're teaching them about caring for the community. We're teaching them all these different things that, that we're not outwardly in a classroom with books and pencils and paper. We're doing it in, in, a, in, a, in a much more impactful way, I think. Number one, we're doing it by example, right? We're leading by example. We're showing them what's important, but not only showing them and telling them, but they're, by doing it, they get to embody it and, and then it cements it with them as, as far as carrying that forward in their own value system. And they're a lot more likely in the future to be positioned to, to want to give back to the community and they'll know how to do it. Absolutely, absolutely, you're, you're totally true. And uh, we were taught that you put in the most and you take out the least, you know? And I think that that, that sort of shift is really important right now, remembering that that's how we were raised. 
You know, one of the um, words that that I found on your website that struck me as a, if I were to, you know, want to try to choose one word, which would be hard to do, but it's <laughs> reconciliation. And we hear that word used a lot, but I'd like you to explain to the viewers what it means to your organization. What does that mean? Yeah, reconciliation is one of the most powerful um, ways to think about trauma, historical trauma, personal trauma, um, colonial trauma, and then to make them right, make that trauma right, ho'oponopono, to make it clean again, to make it correct again, to make it healed and connected and whole again. Um, reconciliation among two people, that connection to others is when your relationship is good. But there's also internal reconciliation. There's reconciliation between one's self and one's culture, between oneself and one's land, between oneself and one's ancestor. Um, those stories of reconciliation, like it takes courage for an organization not only to focus on what's good and awesome and aloha and bright, but to be fierce about it, that I acknowledge the pain that we've come through. I acknowledge the sacrifice that has been made for me to be here. And I'm here to make that right. I'm here to invest my mana to that healing. I, for me, that's what reconciliation is all about. That's awesome. Uh, I, and that's such a powerful word. And one of the things that strikes me or struck me about the organization as well was the how our relationship to the land. We hear people talk about that all the time. And the reality is how very critical it is to nourish the land because the land nourishes us, right? So, I mean, it, I think we forget that because we go to the store and we there it is on the shelf or there it is in the freezer section or whatever and understanding where does all that come from and why is that even important and um and you guys have a whole program built around that yes that's right um because it's not a nice to have it's a must have <laughs> we don't survive without the earth the earth clearly can survive without us <laughs> um, and, and so this idea of familial connection family kin connection to land not that not only that my grandfather taught me about it but that the land herself is my grandmother that that is our approach to land engagement and health um, the idea that wholeness and that comes back also to reconciliation because our connection to land and our connection to um, the ways to malama aina and aloha aina to make sure that the aina is leading our choice making around politics and economics and food systems and health systems, land should lead. She is first, you know? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people see like, oh, nature is nice. <laughs> you know, I go for a walk and it's something superfluous. But in fact, nature is foundation. I know the earth, she is our foundation. Without her, human health is nothing. You know, I just want to, I'm going to wrap up on that note. Uh, no doubt we could go another hour and a half, two hours <laughs> easily. I have so many questions for you. Uh, I just want to thank you so very much for coming on the show. I want, I, I'm so thankful for the contributions that you make to the community. And uh, even by doing this show, you're making a contribution to the community. So I just want to thank you for that. Thank you. Mahalo.